John here from FPB Australia. Welcome back to The Couch, episode three. With me I've got Jared. Cheers, Jared. Cheers, mate. We've, uh, it's a cold winter night, we've got the fire crackling over here. Before we get started, mate, the usual routines. Put one of our hats on your melon. Thanks, buddy. Beautiful, there you Beautiful. go. Uh, all right, uh, just thought I'd introduce you to Jared. Jared's got a very unique position in the drone world. Jared, you're a chief pilot. I am a chief pilot. And you have subordinate pilots under you, unlike a lot of the guys I deal with, that's just single man operation, their own business maybe one other mate that flies with them. You've got a number of pilots under you. Yeah, so we've grown from myself to three to now 14 subordinates. So we've got 14 pilots, all flying drones, scattered across a, a large area of the state. How do you manage that? Uh, with an electronic system, basically. Ah, so not paper-based? No paper-based. So it's all cloud-based. Yep. I can, I can drag paper out of it if I need to, or CASA wants some information. Yep. It's all cloud-based, it's all Doubly redundant. So all the pilots are in there? All the pilots are in there. And the machines are in there? All the machines are in there. So you can look at maintenance issues, take them in and out of the service. I can do that and it will tell me if one needs maintenance. They so. put job safety assessments in, it pops up for you, you approve, yep. all that sort of stuff. Yep. What's the software? It's called AVCRM. AVCRM? Yep. I know the software myself, I've looked at it. Um, I don't actually use it myself um, uh, for no other reason that we've got a system in place that works. But uh, So without that, you'd have some serious I'd, I'd spend a lot of time printing off paperwork, signing bits of paper and scanning right. them. So, And this is not a paid endorsement for AVCRM by any stretch, but I wanted Jared's personal opinion on the product and you think it's a good product? I think it's a fantastic product. Right. Uh, I, I was really impressed with it. I did a lot of research into it before I endorsed a, a business case to buy this stuff. Yep. And I am very, very happy. I think it's got better functionality than some of the, the more expensive products out there. So. Right. Cool. So we've ticked that off the list. You use a, an electronic management system. How do you go about managing those pilots? Like, you, they must be requesting jobs all the time, obviously. Yeah, so we can get a lot of jobs requests. We get, yep. as I said, about 15 jobs a week down yep. to about three jobs a week if yep. we've got a bit of rain. So. Okay. And they're all flying a number of different machines, Phantoms and Inspires, I believe. Phantoms, Inspires, and right. we've got a single fixed one, EB. Oh, yep, yeah. okay, yep, yeah. they'll shake and, shake and fly. Shake and, shake and bake, yes. <laughs> shake and fly. So, are you, some of the other complexities, you need to make sure, because part of your REOC is to make sure your pilots are current and proficient on the airframes they're flying. That's right, yes. And we use, in our school, we use the five flight rule. So every five, um, for those guys that have trained with us, for every five um, production flights, there should be a training flight. Is that similar to what, what, what do you do in your regime? We, we sort of have a, a a time-based preference. Yep. You know, I, I like to say that every fortnight you get out and have a flight. I will accept every month because the guys get busy. They, they have full-time jobs in addition to flying drones. Of course. So, you know, once a month, I want something in their calendars that pops up, says next Tuesday, I need to go and do a flight. Yep, so training flight. Training you know, flight. No stress, no trying to get it in a specific location. Yep. Getting back on the sticks and, and honing skill sets. Yeah, and if I had the time, I'd like to get around to them probably once every six months. Yep. So we've got four, four I call them air bases. Yep. Uh, I go to each air base probably once every month and a half, every six weeks. Right. I, I watch the guys train, give them a few pointers, yep. you know, take them through any questions they've got, and then off we go. So we you're maintaining them. the visual oversight of all these pilots, not just from an electronic software point of view, but physically. Physically, being able right. to see, you know, are they feeling stressed? Are they, yep. are they comfortable? You know, yep. even the way you hold your body, yeah, yeah, is, yeah it's, it's very taxing if you've got your shoulders pulled yeah, up yeah, right yeah. your ears. So, in your organisation, obviously, big corporate client, uh, or one of our corporate clients, big corporate organisation, safety's got to be everything. Safety's it. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know, the OHS alone, I've got a, a, a couple of clients I know that work on building sites, doing some um, visuals for building sites, and the, I won't call it palaver because that's the wrong choice of word, but the safety boxes they have to tick to get on site and fly the drone. Um, you obviously follow a similar thing, right? It, you want guys going home the same way they came to work. That's right. That's right. And we're, our guys work in remote environments. You know, we right. could be could be three hours from the nearest uh, right. even medical centre. So. Right. Yeah. So this brings us to this beast. So you've got the Inspires and, and Phantoms through your. We, we've been out flying this today. Yeah. How did you? How do you compare something like this? And for those that don't know, this is the M600 Pro, big hexacopter with 21 inch carbon blades. How did you find this? in comparison to say something like the Inspire? From a, a physical presence, it's quite, it's more intimidating. It's Ooh. certainly a lot bigger. Ooh. She's intimidating, all right, look at it, it's huge. It certainly gives you a decent <laughs> arm workout when you're carrying it out to the field. Yeah, not the nearly 10 kilos without a payload. That's, uh, it's got a bit of weight to it, fully battery, yep. Uh, 
turning it on it's also fairly intimidating these blades are fairly scary but once it's once it's airborne and you've got the legs up it's easy to fly. It flies like a big oh, phantom yeah, it flies almost. Flies like a big phantom. Yeah, she's she's pretty good. A bit more inertia, I guess. A bit more, you know, weight shifting around the sky, right? Yeah, you need to think about what you're going to do before you do it. Yeah, be a, be a second in front of the machine. Or, or you almost need to be two seconds in two front seconds of this machine. So. Yeah, very good. And so at some point, your guys are going to be flying maybe something as big as this. Does that worry you as a chief pilot? Uh, it worries me from the point of view that you can't be everywhere at once, yep. but I have trust in my operators. We selected our operators based on the fact that we knew they were responsible people. Yep. Uh, I've now witnessed them all fly through through our training, yep. and I'm fairly comfortable that they're all they're okay. all good. But I still take them, they fly phantoms all the time, but I will still step them up, you know, phantom, inspire, then inspire and then we take them into the sub 25 right. kilo cap. So let me ask you a question, as a chief pilot who's got pilots underneath him, and you're in the game every day, you're playing it, does it concern you that someone can just who might have more money than cents, for argument's sake, can just buy something like this and just go and put it up. Is that a concern? It does worry me. It yeah. worries me that there's no controls on uh, on yeah. something this size. It's, it's a big animal, right? It's a big animal. You flew this over a group of people and it, it had a catastrophic failure. We're not talking about someone <laughs> getting a cut on the head. We're talking no. about someone going to hospital. Yeah, badly. It's, yeah. it's a it's a lot of weight and big props. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's so that's a little bit of an insight into for those of you who are single pilot operation to someone like Jared who who flies uh, with a group of pilots who have got their own thing happening and maintenance issues with the aircraft. So there's a lot goes into running that type of organization. It's, it's yeah. you know, it's, a, almost, it's a full-time job, basically. It is pretty much a full-time job. Yeah. Once you get about five operators, you're gonna start doing less flying and more managing. Yeah. So. And the last thing I wanna ask you is, I, I get a lot of feedback from people saying, oh, these, this, these drone things are a bit of a fad, you know, they're, they're the in thing now, but, you know, they'll be gone in a couple of years and, and they're, they're not all cracked up to be. Do you see these things hanging around in what you do? Because you do asset inspection, right? I do. So you've got to get eyes on something that sometimes is in a remote environment and sometimes unfriendly environment, but now you can put this machine where it's safer than putting a human. Yeah. Uh, do you see them being a fad? Certainly not a fad. Right. Uh, very, very broad and very, very strong support from management above me in our our safe our drive our driver for this is safety safety yeah. uh, so we're we're able to put one of these at the top of one of our one of our assets about 100 meters up in the air and we can look at the at the wall yep and how valuable is that asset uh, we are talking billions of dollars we're right. not talking we're not talking we're, we're not talking little little assets little assets here right but having something that we can respond quickly you know a helicopter might take a bit to get out there yep People might not like flying around our assets. Saves a bloke trudging through scrub to get that's, to. Yep. That's right. We have we have some some very remote assets. So keeping the guys away from potential sources of danger by yep. putting a two thousand dollar unit up in the air, or in this case an eight thousand dollar unit, unit, plus payload. But plus, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's certainly something that I see massive benefits in. So they're not going to go away for you anytime. Oh, they're so. not going to go away. Right, that, that's what I thought. Yeah. So there you go, guys. A little bit of an insight into a bigger organisation running multiple pilots. There's all sorts of challenges: people management, pilot management, recency and proficiency. Um, the only other thing I'll say to you is, these guys coming out of flight school, like ourselves, we train as we know. We've trained a lot of your, your blokes. Um, you still put them through some sort of. If you were to step them up to something like this, even though they come through, you know, type training now after those changes, they have to be endorsed by a training school to fly this machine. Yep. You'd still put them through an induction program of your standard. Yep. So we, we have our our manual requirements, yep. but we also have an induction requirement on on you know our health and safety requirements yep. of a business yep. that the guys all know, but how drone use and UAV use relates to that yep. and how to fly safely obviously but and I also, battery management obviously battery management yep. knowing when it's time to come back or there's sort of a stuff. long way out there sometimes and then battery transportation and storage policies right yeah but and storage policies of you know 10 batteries at a time you only have to have one pop yeah and then we're in trouble then we're in real trouble and so and the guys that have been on my course we've seen some videos of lipos going nasty now you've got these things out with guys you know, in the field. So yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, a, it's complex. The ability to get rid of a battery quickly is, yeah. is really important. <laughs> so. You've got a complex. You've got a complex job. It's, it's a complex. It's job. It's not just you know you got fourteen blokes out there flying drones and it's just put a drone up, get some footage, and come home. It's you got a lot to you know, think about. It's a complex job, and yeah. it's a lot to think about. But it's the sort of thing that I've been feeling more and more comfortable as you do more of it. So right, it's always good to have mentors. 
Well, mate, thanks for joining us on the couch. We flew this today. We we flew a um, we flew from one extreme to the other. We went from this to the Mavic. That's a crazy little toy. That thing. It's it's. Uh, I shouldn't call it a toy because it is another drone and it, it can it can hurt you if it hits you. But great little device, right? Great little, great little. Thing. And we did the disco fixed wing. So, mate, thanks for joining me on the couch. Cheers, Cheers mate. Um, so there you go. A little bit of an insight, guys. As I said before about multi-pilot facets. It's not just. You know, as easy as to take your drone out and fly. I hope this is giving you an insight into bigger organisations and this big animal. If you get a chance to fly one of these, have a crack. They're an awesome machine. They're, They're good fantastic. Machine. Until we uh, meet again next time, thanks for joining us again on the couch. If you're flying a drone, please do so safely and responsibly. Safe skies for all. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.